You have inspired me to clean my car today. Hey guys, it's Nick here with Parks Detailing, and today we're gonna to be working on Jonathan's 340i again. I know we've already gone through coating this car, putting PPF on it. We've gone through the check and wash, basically your hand wash uh, regiment, and today we're going to go over how to clean your interior. Jonathan's interior is already extremely clean, so we don't really need to go over the uh, vacuuming and air compressing process. Uh, but first step, if your car is not already this free of debris and dirt and everything, you're gonna want to raise the seats, move them into different positions. Um, you can see I've kind of extended the um, bolsters out there, the leg rests, so you can vacuum into all the cracks, blow out all the cracks and crevices first. Um, if you have an air compressor, that works really well for that. Um, or you can use like a car dryer. We sometimes use the air S from below to do that. One little tip is the seats, like in these cracks, they love to hold little bits of dirt. And so you kind of have to take your hands a little bit and spread them. Obviously be careful when you do that, you know, with the stitching and everything. But when we vacuum and blow out, we actually like spread them apart a little bit so that we can fully clean in there. Same thing with like the seat rails underneath the seats. Um, it's all about the prep. So today we're gonna be going over the products and the techniques that we use to clean the, the surfaces in the interior. But if the prep is not good and you still have all this dirt and debris everywhere, you're kind of gonna be like grinding dirt around and creating more of a mess. So um, spend a good amount of time vacuuming, blowing out, dusting off everything so that when you introduce the uh, chemical cleaners there, you're, you've got a good clean surface to work with. All right, so now that we've got the interior prepped, like I said, Jonathan brought it to us pretty clean, so uh, not too much was required on that aspect from the vacuuming and dusting and blowing out standpoint. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the leather. Uh, I like to do this first um, because it is one of the messier steps, I guess I would say, versus like doing the dash and the glass. Uh, I, I leave those for last. We recently redid the kits on our website. So today we're gonna be using our leather care kit. And this kit includes Estec leather cleaner, Estec lotion, which is their leather protectant, a Gion leather cleaning brush, and a two pack of Clean bubble towels. We're also gonna be using our interior detailing kit, which is a interior detail spray. You can use this on the dash, basically any of the plastic or leather surfaces in the car and glass cleaner. That also includes a two pack of bubble towels. Here I have just one sitting here, but if you order the kit, it will come with a blue and a white and then a glass shine towel. We're also gonna be going over how to clean the Alcantara in the car. Jonathan specifically asked me about that. And we use a rinse-free cleaner for that, which is actually like a hybrid cleaner. You can use it on the outside of the car, inside of the car. But from my experience, um, unless your Alcantara is just completely trashed, this product is the safest thing to clean it with. It's a very mild cleaner. We also have Platinum Potions here. This is a pretty cool product. We're actually the US distributors of this brand. It's from Australia and it's a fragrance brand, but it actually has antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. So for detailers that are dealing with like mold mitigation, um, shampooing carpets, wet extracting carpets, this is a great product that you can use after that to spray into the carpets uh, to keep that mold from coming back and prevent new mold from growing. So they also have 24, I believe, different scents when we have a few more on the way. So. They have a huge uh, variety of fragrances. It's all water-based, it's not gonna stain. All right, so first step is we're gonna use Estec Leather Cleaner. Obviously, like I said, this is after you've vacuumed, you've blown out. If you've got a bunch of dirt here in the cracks, it's just gonna create more of a mess. So make sure the seat is nice and clean before you start scrubbing the leather. Pretty easy, we're just gonna spray it on here. Their cleaner is, um, it's kind of like a white viscosity, like sort of like a gel, which is pretty nice because when you spray onto like areas like this, back of the seat, it's gonna cling really well. So you see it's not just like running down and, and pooling up in the cracks. So I like that about this product, makes it pretty easy to use. 
With the leather cleaning brush, uh, these are very soft bristles. You don't want to press down super hard. Um, there's not a lot of pressure that's needed. And I'm just going to scrub the leather. Oop. Areas where the leather is shiny, like right here on his bolster, uh, it's super common for it to happen here and like your steering wheel, shift knob, e-brake boot, all the high traffic areas or like your center console here, it's got a little bit going on. Um, that's actually not how leather is supposed to look. It's actually supposed to look matte. Um, a lot of people will put certain products on that give it that kind of shiny appearance. Not really what we go for here at the shop. Um, we want it to be clean and protected, but we want that matte OEM new leather look. So that is actually like the oils from your skin um, getting onto the leather here. It's usually like your jeans, so all the dirt that's on your jeans, you're sliding in and out of the car. Even when you're really careful, it just happens. So whenever you see your leather start to turn that kind of shiny color, that's when you know it's time to get it cleaned. One thing to note about the S-Tech um, interior detailing products for the leather, it's safe to get on plastic. So you could probably notice I'm getting some overspray here on like the center console and the um, seatbelt buckle, things like that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna harm anything. If you want to avoid overspray, you can go directly into the brush. I've done that before on areas like steering wheels, like right here where it butts up to the Alcantara. I'm not necessarily trying to like spray the whole steering wheel and create more of a mess and more time having to clean things than I need to. So you can go directly into the brush if you want. Jonathan's interior is pretty clean, so I'm not gonna scrub every square inch of his leather. Uh, just trying to get the point across to you guys who are doing this themselves at home how the process works. So our bubble towels come in two packs. Uh, now that I've scrubbed the leather, I'm gonna use this to wipe the cleaner off. Comes with a blue towel and a white towel. I specifically like to use the white towel for the cleaning step. And the reason why is it's a quarter of the towel like I would for any other detailing process. And when I'm wiping, I can see how much dirt's coming off. So what I'm gonna do is wipe the whole seat once with one side of the towel. Not the dirtiest seat in the world, but you can still see it's picked up a little bit of dirt. And the reason why I like using the white towel is I can flip over to a clean side and then wipe the seat again. And if I'm still seeing dirt, then it's probably an indication I need to scrub the seat again. So as you can see, I'm kind of going through all the cracks to get some of the cleaner out. If you're in you know, a position where you have an air compressor, at this point, you could maybe turn it on a lower setting and sort of blow the cracks out and use the towel to catch any of the cleaner. So the towel's not really picking up too much dirt at this point, it's just wet. But I do notice that like this area is still a little bit shiny. This area is still a little bit shiny. That could be due just to the age of the leather, but um, for the sake of being thorough, I'm gonna scrub these two areas one more time just to see if I can get a little bit more of an improvement. Starting to get a little bit of dye coming off right there. Totally normal. Unfortunately, BMW black is pretty bad about it. Like you'd be shocked, like some of the F80s and stuff, uh, M2s, I've seen it a couple years in. People who are super careful, it's just. My first F30 had dye like that that was coming off. Yeah. Yeah, those so, are black. Yeah, I mean, obviously keeping it clean and protected is gonna help with that. But as much as I love BMW, I think some of that's just due to how they're dyeing the seats maybe. Yep. All right, so now that we're done cleaning, um, like I said, this is just for instructional purposes. So I'm not gonna take the time to go through and clean every square inch of leather in his car. We're just gonna focus on this area to, to get the principles across to you guys. Gonna discard this white towel and the S-Tech leather cleaner. And we're gonna go on to the lotion. So this is the protectant. Um, it's actually like a clear product. Um, it's pretty interesting. There's still a little bit of, um, like cleaner here in the cracks, but their cleaner does contain a small amount of conditioners in it. It's worth noting, you know, you don't have to worry about is 110% of it off. If you have a little bit of residue here and there and you mix it in with this, basically, it's not the end of the world. The way most leather cleaning systems work that we sell, the cleaner has a small amount of conditioner in it. So the idea is you clean your leather, 
you put this protectant on it, and then periodically you can clean it with the cleaner, which also has conditioners in it. So it's not necessary every single time you clean your leather to reapply conditioner. It's kind of like if you put a sealant on your car, on your paint, and you're using a shampoo that has a small amount of sealant in it, you're, you're topping it up, but then periodically you reach a point where it's like, all right, it's time to just start over. We're gonna scrub the leather and reapply the conditioner. So what a lot of our clients will do, and what we do here in the shop, is we will clean the leather, we'll apply the protectant, and then when it's time to do like your routine maintenance detail, you know, you're just vacuuming the car out, hitting the high traffic areas, we have clients that will just spray the cleaner directly onto a bubble towel and wipe the areas that are a little bit more high traffic so that you're not having to do this process every single time. If you're someone like Jonathan and you keep your interior clean, that's a good regimen. Me on my uh, daily driver, you know, I have a Tesla Model 3, I have a one-year-old daughter and she wreaks havoc on the interior. So I'm typically getting out the brush every single time that I clean the car. So it uh, just kind of depends on the amount of traffic on your interior and and what your goals are. For the protectant step, at this point, I'm, I'm getting towards the end of the interior detail. So I actually like to spray it directly into the towel. You could spray it on the seat like I did with the cleaner, but you're gonna get overspray and you're at this point in, in the process, I'm trying to kind of keep it clean. So I'm just gonna spray it directly into the towel. I'll spray some on the seat so you guys can see it. It is kind of interesting. It's like a clear product. Um, which I've not really seen that with other uh, leather sealants or leather conditioners, if you want to call it that, um, but it's pretty unique. This part's pretty simple. You're just gonna apply it evenly to the seat. Some people like to use a microfiber applicator. I like the bold towel. They come as a two pack, so it's just kind of convenient. You get one for cleaning and one for putting on your protection. Might sound obvious, but worth mentioning, if at this point you're seeing dirt on the towel, you probably need to go back to your cleaning step. It means that you missed, missed some areas. That's another reason why I like the bubble towels. They're pretty light colored, the white and then the light blue. So it's pretty easy to see how effective of a job you're doing in terms of your cleaning steps. One thing I have noticed, um, a lot of these interior, they call them conditioners, but really it's like a, more of a sealant or a protectant. Um, some of them are going towards the SiO2 based protection, like the same as your exterior protectants. Anything SiO2 based is gonna have a little more, I don't like to use the word streakiness because that implies that it's harder to use. It's not really that, it's just a little more wiping is involved. Um, the benefit though is that it's gonna last longer and be a little more durable. So one observation I've noticed with the protectant it is easy to use. I mean, you can see that was a pretty painless process, but on like a black leather, I did my Tesla yesterday outside in the parking lot and it was in the sun. And obviously on black, you can see every little uh, bit of residue. So if you do have some of that left, you can either take a bubble towel, put water on it, um, kind of wipe it off, or I just let it dry for a few more minutes and then I come back and, and buff it off. So, so I'm just gonna go over and flip to a clean side. Just buff off any residue. The end result is just a nice, clean leather surface. It's protected, but it's not shiny. It's not super slick. If you sit in the car or you touch the leather, you can definitely tell there's something on there, but it's not that, you know, greasy, uh, feel like you're gonna slide out of the car on a turn or something like that, mm -hmm. so. Any of the interior products we carry, we kinda, that's what we strive for, is something that leaves it OEM look, but, a nice feel and protected. So that is it for the leather. Um, some people will choose on the high traffic areas. If you want, you can apply a second layer of the protection. I think if you're someone that's continually cleaning the car, it's not totally necessary. But for me, um, I don't get the opportunity to clean my car as much as I'd like to. So I'll typically like double up my steering wheel, double up the bolster on this side and this side. So now that we're done with the leather, I'll take you guys on to the plastic and vinyl surfaces, the glass, and then lastly, the carpets. All right, so at this point, you've done all your leather surfaces. It might be hard for you to see, Jonathan, um, but like right here, we've got some overspray from the cleaning stages. So S-Tech Interior is basically an all-purpose interior cleaner. This is safe to go on your leather, plastic, vinyl, even like the nav screen or the uh, dash screen here, steering wheel, anything on the interior. It's not gonna damage anything. Probably wouldn't go spraying it on your headliner. I've not tried that yet, so 
um, but any of like the hard surfaces in the car, it's totally safe. So I like to use this to clean off any of that overspray or residue left over from cleaning the leather. Um, it's also just a good, sort of like a quick detailer for the outside of the car. Once you've washed your car, you're getting all the water drips off. You want to get any of those last little fingerprints and stuff from washing it. Same principle here. We're just going to clean up all the leather cleaner residue. You can wipe down the dash, wipe down the screens, and it's going to leave a nice OEM sheen. It's not going to be shiny, and it also helps uh, prevent from dust collecting. So it kind of has that anti-static effect. So great product just to keep in the car in general. Um, if you're someone who's very anal about your interior, uh, we have people that will just keep this in the car and periodically wipe down the interior. Um, or if you're someone that keeps your car as clean as Jonathan, I mean, today, the way he brought this car in, we probably could have just vacuumed it out and uh, hit it with some S-Tech interior and called it a day. So it has a very mild cleaning capability. Uh, we have tested that out, like really dirty steering wheels. How clean can you get it with this and just a bubble towel? But obviously it's not, it has a mild cleaning ability, but it's nowhere near using an actual leather cleaner. Uh, the way I like to use this, again, when you're at this stage of the detail, I don't like to be spraying things on the surface because it just is creating more mess. So just like the leather protectant, I'm just gonna spray some into the towel and then I'll wipe these areas where I got some of the cleaner and conditioner on there. It's great for the steering wheel. Has a really nice fragrance to it as well. And then if you need to, you can flip over to the dry side. You can see there's like some residue. Buff off any residue. So you can do the same thing uh, like these kick panels here. You can use it for that as well. Anything plastic, vinyl, leather, even like these carbon parts, which I assume are genuine carbon. I'm not worried about S-Tech interior damaging it or creating a mess or anything like that. It does have UV protective qualities. So for people who are concerned about their dashboard, things like that, um, it is a good product just to keep it topped up and protected. So again, I'm not gonna go through the whole entire interior. I do see some spots where I got a little bit of overspray here, but um, I think you guys get the principle pretty basic. It's just an interior detailer. So at this point, we have vacuumed the car, we've blown it out, dusted it out, cleaned the leather, protected the leather. Now we're going through getting towards the tail end where we're kind of getting the fine details, getting the fingerprints off, any of the overspray off, cleaning the dash. At this point, uh, Jonathan asked about his Alcantara, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. Um, after you're done with that, you would go onto the glass, and then if you wanna put a fragrance in, it will be the step to do that. So Jonathan was asking me about the Alcantara in his car. Um, this is a product that can be used on the outside of the car, inside of the car. Uh, a really popular brand that a lot of people know about is Optimum No Rinse. We use American Detailer Garage Wipeout. It's just a more updated formula, in my opinion, and we have really good results with it. So this is Wipeout Fusion, which has a little bit of foaming effect to it, um, which is nice for the outside of the car when you're trying to get into cracks. You can put it in a pump sprayer to foam. The other Wipeout is more of their maintenance product. It doesn't foam, um, and it has wax in it, a little bit of sealant and wax. So for interior cleaning, we like to use this product because um, we don't need any wax or sealant in it. And it does have that foaming uh, capacity. So if you want to clean into like steering wheel buttons and things like that, you can get a detail brush. We don't sell any right now, but we're working on carrying some. So you're able to spray in here, kind of agitate. It'll foam up a little bit, but it, as the name implies, rinse free. You don't have to like rinse it away. So it's not gonna um, require like flushing it out with water or anything like that. It's a very mild cleaner, it's pH neutral. Um, for Alcantara, it works extremely well. So we dilute it at their glass cleaner dilution, which is one to 64. So half an ounce and a 32 ounce spray bottle, like this one is all you need. And the way I use it, I just like to air compress the Alcantara. If you have an air compressor that works well, or like I said, a car dryer, uh, blow dryer works well. You just wanna make sure like the stitching and everything is nice and clean. His is pretty clean, so there's no brushing required. If it was really dirty, I would recommend using a Gion leather brush, but don't use the same one that you're using for the leather cleaner. Um, you wanna have a dedicated brush just for the 
for the suede material. So the way I'm gonna use it today, since this is pretty clean, I'm just gonna spray the cleaner directly into the towel. See that little bit of foaming effect. Dab it together and pretty simple process. I'm just gonna gently wipe it. The key with Alcantara is not to oversaturate it. I mean, his is not very dirty, but if it was, you'd be seeing a, a brown or a black color on the towel. There are some other products on the market that are specific for Alcantara clean, cleaning. Uh, Sonax makes one, I've used it before. Um, it is a good product, but from my experience, it. I think it serves a purpose for Alcantara that's almost like on its way out. You know, it's it's beat, it's starting to mat down. Um, and that product specifically, you're gonna wanna use a brush. It's like a foaming product, if I'm not mistaken, almost like shaving cream consistency. Um, and I've used it before, it works well, but getting this material that saturated is not something I would wanna do on a regular basis. Um, it is gonna cause issues over time. That product works well, again, if it's like, Maybe you bought a used steering wheel or something and it's kind of like on its last leg and it's a Hail Mary uh, resort before replacing it or rewrapping it or whatever. Um, but for maintenance, really the best thing you can do is just blow dry it, air compress it, and then gently clean it with something like this. You can put protectant on it. We sell fabric protection, uh, fabric coatings. I don't do it here at my shop. Um, because my biggest concern is I don't want to change the feel of it. I mean, that's one of the biggest appeals to this material is that it has that nice, supple, soft feel. I've done some testing on my own car. It's almost negligible. Um, you can't really tell, and it will make water beat off of it. It looks really cool, and it does provide a certain level of protection in terms of like resisting stains and things like that. Here, you know, when we're working on customers' cars, I'm not too keen on doing that because I'm just worried that if I put that on someone's suede and it changes the way that it feels to them, you can't really take it off. The way we treat it here is we just clean it and leave it alone and just maintain it as best you can. All right, so now we've done the leather, we've prepped the interior, we've cleaned the leather, protected the leather, we've gone through the Alcantara general interior wipe down. At this stage, you should be pretty much finalizing your interior. Last step is always gonna be glass. Don't do your glass any other step than last because what's gonna happen is you're gonna be cleaning this door after you've cleaned your glass and then you're gonna get interior cleaner on the glass and you're kind of repeating steps. So um, in our interior kit, we include S-Tech glass. This is an awesome glass cleaner and it works really well even in direct sunlight. It won't streak, which is pretty difficult to find in a glass cleaner. We carry a couple of different ones that have that property. Um, Gion glass is one of them and S-Tech glass is another. This is the one that we include in our interior kit. We carry two different types of glass cleaning towels. They're both from Clem Korea, but for our interior detail kit, we specifically chose the original Glass Shine. The difference between the Glass Shine and the Glass Shine HD is that the original is a little bit thinner. I like using the HD for the outside of the car better. It's basically a thicker, larger towel, but for the interior, I like the thinner towel because it's a little bit easier to get like into these cracks, like where the, the speaker meets the glass and on the windshield specifically, like around the outsides. I just find it's a thinner towel that I can fit into areas a little bit better. So this is the one that we include with the interior. All their towels come wrapped in a contamination-free packaging. They all come pre-washed as well. So you don't have to worry about opening up a new towel from them and having lint everywhere and having to wash it first and go through all that process. Key with cleaning glass is you wanna have the towel quartered and you wanna keep it flat. So a mistake I see a lot of people doing is that when they clean their glass, the towel is bunched up like this, it's gonna cause streaks. So you want it nice and flat so that there's not a bunch of bunched up material. You can spray this directly on the glass, obviously. If it's really dirty, like if someone has a dog or a kid and there's just like fingerprints or drool, you know, slobber from the dog everywhere on it, I will spray directly on the glass. But for this, I'm gonna spray it directly into the towel. Again, I don't wanna get overspray all over this. If you do, it's not gonna damage the interior surface. I mean, I wouldn't go like soaking your door panel with glass cleaner, but the cleaners that we carry are specifically safe for the interior surfaces. So 
So I typically like to do one pass with the side that has cleaner on it, and then I flip it over to a dry side to get all the streaks off. One tip that I've learned over the years for windshields, they're notoriously difficult to get clean, streak-free. One reason or a theory that I've seen passed around the detailing community, which sounds reasonable to me, I mean, I'm inclined to believe it, we work on a lot of brand new cars here. So if you are a new car owner, um, the theory is that the engine bay is burning off all these plastics and rubbers and different materials over time with the engine heat cycling and it will kind of create like a film, as gross as that sounds, you know, you're breathing that in, but um, a film on the inside of the windshield. So we have had brand new cars that come in, clean the windshield, get it totally streak free, and then we pull the car outside, move it around or whatever, and it's, it's like back. And it's almost like this film that you're pushing around uh, can be quite frustrating. And it seems to be there for the first like 500,000 miles, just this continual thing. But if you aren't a new car owner, and you're having issues with streaks on your windshield on the inside. When you clean it, you want to go push out to the sides. What a lot of people will do is they're cleaning out here and then they're pulling this in. A lot of the dirt is gonna collect on these edges over time. It's like down the bottom, on the sides and on the top. So when I clean a windshield, I try to start in the middle and work my way out to the sides you're never gonna get it 110% perfect. Meaning like there's always gonna be that little bit in here. It's not like a side window where I can roll it down and clean the top edge of that glass and get the top edge. I mean, I'll sometimes take the towel when I roll down the side window and like roll it over and go back and forth to like get that 100% clean. And you can't do that with a windshield because you're not gonna take your windshield out to clean the edges. So the reality is you are basically pushing very fine amounts of film and dirt into the corners, but you don't want to go from a corner and pull inwards because then you're in this never ending cycle of creating streaks. So start in the middle, go out to the sides. Um, it does help if you're not in direct sunlight, but like I said, this and Gion glass work very well in direct sunlight. We get cars um, when we're like preparing to deliver uh, right before a customer picks up. Sometimes we'll see a, a smudge or a spot on the glass out in the parking lot mm -hmm. and we don't experience streaking with it. So. Um, but if you are in a situation where you can be indoors, that's ideal for sure. So glass is the last step you're gonna do. Um, at that point, you could use platinum potions. If you're someone that likes having a fragrance in your car, or if you're dealing with any sort of like odor issues, uh, whether it's mold or just odor in general. Um, I have two dogs and like I said, I have a one-year-old. So there's dogs in the car, there's food in the car. And uh, sometimes there is a little bit of funk to it even after I vacuum it out and everything so this product like I said is water-based it's not going to stain your carpets you can use it in white carpets tan carpets it's not going to leave any sort of coloring to it and it does not <clears throat> last as long as like an oil-based fragrance but for us that's not necessarily a bad thing we like that it basically evaporates with UV so it's not going to last for weeks in your car but it is gonna last a substantial time. And more importantly, it's gonna help eliminate the odor, not just mask it up. After you clean the glass, if you want to, you could spray some of this in the carpets. Um, the instructions call for six sprays per carpet, which is quite a lot. Um, that would be more for like an odor mitigation or a mold mitigation situation. Some customers will just do a couple sprays in each carpet if they just want it to smell good for a couple days. Um, but if we do have a car where we're shampooing carpets and getting rid of an odor, we'll follow the instructions and do six full sprays in each floorboard. That's it for interiors. Um, unless Jonathan brings us a totally trashed car, uh, that's, that's pretty much going to be his regiment for this car. Um, but, you know, there are obviously further um, detailing measures that can be taken for interiors, such as like stain removal and carpets, pet hair removal, things like that. But um, I think that for Jonathan and his channel, this is gonna be what most of you guys are looking for. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and learned a little bit about doing your interior details. Just a reminder, these packages bundled together are on the site under our kits and they are 10% off by bundling the products together. You can get an additional 5% off using Jonathan's code Thick Whips. The links for those will be in the description. And we are a Charlotte based business. We do paint protection film, coatings, specialize in those two things as well as high end detailing, paint correction 
and we sell pretty much everything that we use in our online store found in those links below. There's a couple of products that we don't sell, but for the most part, if we use it here in the shop, we sell it online and we are working on making more content for you guys to explain how to use these products. All right, you guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. Um, if you guys have any suggestions of things that you want to see us do here in the shop or uh, explain to you or show you how to do, um, feel free to drop those comments down below and we will try to get to it. Other than that, that'll wrap up the video. Uh, like you said, all the products are linked down below. Nick, thanks again, man, yeah, as always. Absolutely, Appreciate man. you. Thank if you, you guys need any services, I'll have his website and his company linked down below, but that'll effectively end today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace out.